hours of your entire day. It is Tuesday, the 25th day of January 2022. My name is Lee Elsie. Thanks for joining the program. As always, you can find out more about me, LeeElsie.com. If that doesn't do it for you, please like our Facebook page, Voice of Freedom. When you do that, share it with your friends, and then there's a back and forth conversation that goes on pretty much uh, all day long, which is a lot of fun. And the 0600 Club is up and ready to rock and roll. Post will be coming up very, very soon. So I guess we begin today with the crotchety old man in the rocking chair on the front porch, Joe Biden. There are times during, or there have been times during this first year as the president of the United States of America that I've actually felt bad for Joe Biden, where deep down in my red, white, and blue patriotism, I didn't want him to fail, like when he gave his State of the Union address or when he does a press conference. I don't want him to collapse. I don't want him to embarrass us, or himself for that matter. I don't want the other countries around the world to sense weakness, but man, they sense weakness. And as the year has progressed, I've gotten to the point now where he is such, and let me use his words, he is such a crotchety son of a bitch. And I can say, because I'm not the president of the United States. And it's an embarrassment that the president of the United States, an oppressor to a, a real legit question, decided that he could say that to a reporter. I'm going to play you the audio. That's a great asset. More inflation. What a stupid son of a bitch. What a, what a stupid son of a bitch. That's what he said. What a stupid son of a bitch. That's what Joe Biden said to a reporter. And that is classy. I, I'm a knuckle dragger, man. I'm, you know, I'm low brow. I don't have that kind of highfalutin intellect like uh, classy Joe Biden and his uh, Delaware cronies. No, I, I am like you. Get up, put my pants on, come to work. Every once in a while, throw out an F-bomb. Haven't done it in 25 years of radio, which is remarkable, by the way. But I don't know if I was in a position of power, the head of the free world, if I would, if I would call a reporter a stupid son of a bitch after a question. I don't know if I would do that. A crotchety old man would do that. A man who's losing his ability to make rational decisions is likely to do something like that. And he did it. And if you take a look around, all of our big adversaries, all of the people that have been waiting in the weeds to see how this president reacted, how he, how he does in times of crisis, well, those countries are beginning to line up to take their swing at the United States. What do you think this whole move in at this point in time from, this, from Russia into sort of the surrounding areas of the Ukraine is all about? is to see what kind of a, a leader Joe Biden is actually going to be. How much he's at, how, are they going to push him to the point where we're at the brink of war? It's an interesting dilemma. China's sitting back, just licking their lips, waiting for the Olympics to end before they can make their move. Only problem with China is timing. They'd love to piggyback something Russia does. Absolutely. The first tanks that go rolling into uh, Ukraine, don't, they, don't you think that China would seize an opportunity to go try to take Taiwan? What the hell would Biden do in that case? I don't think the guy could tie his own shoes. How would he be able to figure that out? And North Korea is conducting new missile tests. If you ever were nervous about the end of the world, right? If that was ever a concern of yours, you ever thought to yourself, man, you know, I, I'm, I'm a little nervous about nuclear war. I'm a little nervous about this. I'm a little nervous about that. I, I hate to see things get out of control. Well, I, I tell you what, this might be the time.
to get a little bit more nervous. I don't want to be chicken little. I'm not telling you the sky is falling. But we've got a man in the White House who is better suited for a big tall glass of lemonade, a straw hat, a rocking chair than he is to be the president of the United States. And you know what? You know it, and I know it. Those of you out there, the millions of liberals who are listening to me right now, you know it. You made a mistake. You screwed up. You voted in somebody incapable of doing the job. You voted somebody in who doesn't really understand the magnitude of the position anymore. He doesn't get it. What do you think would have happened? <laughs> what do you think would have happened if Donald Trump had called a reporter a son of a bitch during the middle of a, an interview? I mean, what do you think would have happened? Now, I know, I'm sure some of you out there will say, well, he said worse. He said, grab him by the blank and blah, blah, blah. Go. Of course, it's always the worst side of it. Because they're, you know, that Trump deranged syndrome is, is running rampant. But you can't have any confidence in this president. You just really can't. I mean, he's almost 80. He looks and feels like he's in his 90s. I have zero trust in this. I know we've gone over this time and time again here on this show. I understand that. It's been a theme. And I keep repeating the same staples of this country over and over again to you because I think it's important. 365 days ago, 700 days ago, before COVID, right? This country was booming. Before COVID, this country was, it was sailing. Yeah, there was some racial division because of some outlandish things that were going on and actually allowed to go on in liberal cities around the country, which if I were in charge of those cities, I'd have put an end to that uh, in day one, but that got out of control. And listen, I'm not saying Trump's perfect. I don't even, I think I told you, I don't even like the guy. Personally, I think I'd take a swing at him. A big swing at him, right? I'm, I'm being serious. I don't think I could stand being in the, in the same room with somebody that's that, that truly that much of a narcissist for more than 15 minutes, but that is what it is. His policies, in, in more cases than not, were on the money. Still on the money. Yes, America first. Yes, independence. Take care of yourself, and that way you can take care of others. It's really a simple idea. But when you look around the country, and crime is, in some places, at an all-time high. Violent crime is at an all-time high. I told you the story yesterday about a friend of mine who was in Hartford, right, at an event. Cop came over to him and said, yeah, if I were you, I wouldn't go outside and take a walk around because it's just not safe. I'm here to protect folks on the inside at an event from gangs and robbers and muggers and all that, inside an event. He said, I wouldn't go outside. So we've defanged the police. We've made them nervous. So crime has spiked. Do you see what's going on at the southern border of the United States of America still to this day? We, we can't talk about it every day. We just don't have enough time to talk about all the things that are wrong. But think about that. During the course of this presidency, you've got millions of illegals coming across the border. By the time Joe Biden is done in four years, who knows? If they just let the faucet keep running, you could see 5 million new illegals coming into this country to add to the 40 million that we already have here, probably more than that. And none of those got checked coming in for COVID. Nobody seemed to care about that. Nobody seemed to care if they were gang members or rapists. Nobody even seemed to care if they were terrorists. Let them in. Doesn't matter. Again, the people who are trying to get in are more important than the people that are already in. That was a position that was taken from day one with this president. 
And I'm gonna keep running down these failures. Afghanistan is a colossal fail, maybe the biggest blunder in our lifetime as far as a military exercise. We still have people over there. The one drone strike killed 10 civ innocent civilians. And the fact that we gave up an air base that we built, a strategic air, air base that gave us a way to, to keep tabs on Iran and China at the same time without you know, costing us any really additional blood or treasure, remarkable the way he handled that, remarkable. And the son of a bitch comment was a question over inflation. You really couldn't hear it as if Biden owns inflation. The Democrat Party owns inflation. Don't you understand that? They own it. When you go to the store and you want to buy yourself, I don't know, you want to buy yourself some ground beef or something like that, whatever it is that you buy, I don't know, whatever one of your staples is, cheese, turkey meat, ham, it's all skyrocketing along with the price of gas, along with the price of everything. Why is that happening? Well, let's look back to what we all told you. All of us talking heads on the right on the radio says when you throw a bunch of money, right? When you just keep pumping money into the system and you keep throwing it away or throwing it at problems, that dollar becomes less valuable. This is not high level economics. This is basic stuff, man. If you create more of something, it's worth less. And they throw, they're still throwing as much money as they can at all these problems. Why? Well, because it helps them get elected again. It helps them the next go around. That's part of this game. And you're part of the problem out there. You're part of the problem because you keep voting these people in who keep making these promises. And eventually, we're going right over the cliff. So yeah, inflation's at a 40-year high. You're paying more for goods and services than you have inflation-wise than you have in the last 40 years. Think about that for a second. I, I told you, I remember sitting around my, my kitchen table with my parents as they were talking about this kind of stuff. And you know, at that point in time, inflation was out of control. It's worse now. We were in, on our way to being energy independent. Listen, I want to go green. I like that idea somewhere along the line. I love the idea of starting my car uh, with solar power, right? Or wind power, whatever. When it's doable and reliable and cost effective, I don't even mind throwing money at that because I do want a clean planet. I like that idea somewhere along the line. I don't want to throw $5 trillion at a problem that doesn't exist and I'd still want to be energy independent at the same time. I don't want to, you know, throw five trillion dollars at wind and then we have to buy all of our oil from the Middle East or other nations that hate us. That's stupid. It makes no sense. And if I asked you to tell me who who has died more under the COVID umbrella, has it been why you were under the, the leadership of Donald Trump or under the leadership of Joe Biden? It's not even close. Not even close. So whatever plan Biden had in place, that was a colossal fail as well. And if you ask any teachers, they are uh, at each other's throats over this whole idea of in-school learning and, and what comes along with that and critical race theory. And all that, those flames have all been fueled by the President of the United States, who in his initial speech, right, when he was sworn in, talked about bringing everybody together. The word unity was used over and over and over again. And he is not only the most divided, divisive president I think I've ever 